We started a new series last week called Dressed for the Occasion. Dressed for the Occasion. Uh, go back and listen to that first message. We talked about being clothed in compassion. There are certain things, certain seasons, certain places that we don't go into unless we're wearing the right clothing, right? Now, some of my kids go to bed in blue jeans, but I don't know how they do that, okay? I, gotta, I can't wear blue jeans to bed. Like, blue jeans aren't for bed, you know? Get comfortable. When I, when I walk at some of these restaurants, now, I've never been to one of these restaurants, probably, I don't think, but you walk into a restaurant that has a dress code, you can't just stroll up in there in, in shorts and flip-flops. They'll say, oh, excuse me, sir. You know, there are certain experiences and certain times in our life where the right attire is required, I can't just hop on a football field wearing this. I'm going to get pulverized. You know, I need some pads and a helmet. And it's the same in the seasons that we go through in life, spiritually speaking. It's like we can't just stroll up into the next season and not be aware of what we have on. We've got to be prepared. And so uh, last week I felt like the Lord is saying to us, and it's been confirmed, um, is that the Lord really needs us to be intentional about putting on compassion during this season that he's calling us into and then today i want to talk about this other piece of clothing that the lord wants us to be intentional about putting on and that is humility humility and honestly i have i could probably make three messages out of this and i had a plan today and um, and all week I was like, OK, I'm going to do this, Lord, but I feel like you're asking me to do something else. And so I'm going to do that. But so here's what we're doing today. Addison, come on. <laughs> this has been a very flowy day, hasn't it? Um, I want to read this first Peter five, five through seven. It says, clothe yourselves, all of you with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. There's so much in those three verses, but I really want to focus on that last one today. And then in two weeks, I'll cover the rest of it. But I just felt like the Lord really derailed today. Because there are people in this house that need to hear this specific thing. So here's what you need to know. The Lord sees you and knows you and you are special enough to stop everything to tell you this one thing. Cast all your anxieties. Some translations say cast all your cares. Cast all your worries on him for he cares for you. He cares for you. Uh, several weeks ago, Addison came up. Uh, for prayer and um, she has a testimony to share of what God has done in her life and you just you just share whatever um, yeah so this whole experience has just been insane um, I'll, it's funny because that Sunday that I came up here along with so many other people that night before we were with some friends and like I was like I just I don't know about this healing stuff that's happening like I'll be honest I was like I, I don't know if I believe it this is a little weird um and so uh that Sunday came around and Gunnar was just going after the healing and I just felt God challenging me and telling me to open my mind to it I even felt him tell me to come up to get prayed over um, and I was just like, nah, like, I'm just, I'm just going to stay back here. Um, and then my husband, it came up to me, Christian, and was like, I feel like God is telling me to tell you to get in line, get up here and get prayed over. And I was like, okay. Um, and so, yeah, I got prayed over that day. Um, I, I had been struggling with depression for years, probably around 10 years. Um, and after that Sunday happened because it's like this internal battle like I didn't know immediately like am I healed I don't know it's not like my leg was broken and I can walk on it again or something so I was like I guess we'll just test it out um and I was on medication at the time and 
that week after that Sunday started and I didn't take my medicine, like just went cold turkey off of it. Um, and normally after about like two days of not being on my medicine, I, I just lose my mind. I'm not okay. Um, but I think it was like Wednesday came around and I realized, I was like, wait a minute, I feel great. Um, and I, I started asking God, I was like, did you heal me? Like, is this real? And I was just praying and I was just talking to him. And I just felt God say to me, you're not going to actually see and feel the full restoration of my healing until you believe that I said what I said I did. And I was like, okay. Um, and so I was just kind of like battling with that and, and trying to figure out what that even means for me. And the next Sunday came around and it was all I could think about. Um, and we were still just going after healing and more people came to the front. Um, and I came to the front and I came up to Leah um, and I was just telling her what I was facing. And she told me like, okay, here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna pray a prayer of belief right in front of me that this is what God did. Um, and I'm gonna hear you pray that. I'm gonna be your witness. And then I'll pray after you. And I was like, whew, okay. And there was just something so powerful, you guys, about me praying that prayer of belief and just saying, like, God, I know you did this. I know that this is who you are. Like, because it was just, it's, it's been so foreign to me. I, I didn't grow up around churches that heal or, or you hear about churches that go a little too far with it and do some weird things. And so I was a little skeptical. And, and so it's just been, the, I, saw, I saw this post a few weeks ago about embracing the mystery of God. Um, and I feel like that, that's what this whole journey has been, is just embracing the mystery and realizing that like I, I, I don't know who God is. But that's the beautiful part is I get to discover him throughout my walk with him and learn more and more about him and see how much he loves me more and more. And then the, the testimony of the healing was another step of realizing like, oh my gosh, you love me so much. Like it's, it's just, it's been insane, but it's also been the most beautiful, beautiful experience of just God opening his heart up even more and just letting his compassion fall on his children in this place. Um, so yeah, um, and it's been since, since I don't know how long ago was that Sunday, August eighth. I haven't been on my medicine since. Uh, I feel the best, the best I have felt in ten years. Like even whenever I was feeling okay or happy, it would always just feel like this weighted blank or blanket of just sadness over it. And so after that Sunday of just praying that prayer of belief. Um, I can't explain it. It was just the, the weighted blanket was lifted and I just experienced full joy for the first time in 10 years and, and still today. So, yeah. yeah. So, Jesus can take away years of debilitating anxiety and depression. He can remove it. And he can also walk with you through it. Religion has led us to believe that we are to stay away from a bottle of pills. Because if we take a bottle of pills, we're, we don't have faith. Right? So if you're on anxiety medication and all that stuff, it's not a, it's not a guilt trip. Someone's testimony is not a guilt trip. And you need the freedom, you have the freedom to listen to the Lord about what to do with your mental health. He gives us good gifts for a reason. Right? But also religion has told us, stay away from the pill bottle. But religious has also, religion has also told us, bottle up your emotions 
and pretend like everything's happy and blessed because, hey, too blessed to be stressed, brother. <laughs> and we confess reality away. We have a habit at our house now. It's a fairly new habit. Every night we say things like, rest is a gift. I will sleep in peace tonight. It's like these declarations, you know. I will not be tormented by nightmares. I will have peace and I will wake in the morning and I will be refreshed, you know. And then on the way to school we say, I'm smart and I'm brilliant and I'm made in God's image and I have the mind of Christ and, and the day is going to be the best day yet. You know, we say all that stuff and as good as that stuff is, and I will continue to do that in my own life because it's just been so, it's been so good to renewing the mind. You know what I'm saying? Scripture, scripture. But there's also a reality that in the church, if we just claim that it's going to be great and that it is great, but we never get honest about what's actually going on, we're just kidding ourselves. And so what, it says, what does this have to do with humility? Well, sometimes it takes humility to say, I'm going to the doctor. And I'm going to stop wrapping this thing in spiritual language and saying I'm too blessed to be stressed when in fact my life's unraveling. And I just need somebody to come along and help me. Humility looks like going and calling a counselor. Humility looks like Addison coming up and receiving prayer that day and saying, God, I don't understand everything, even, but I'm laying my offense and everything aside, and I'm just coming to you, and I know that you don't give bad gifts. You give good, good gifts. You're a good father. So here I am. Humility looks different for everybody in this room today. But what I want you to hear is just the simple words of Jesus this morning. Humility is responding to the simple words of Christ. And for multiple people in this room today, an act of obedience is required. And here it comes. Jesus said, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. You believe it? So, I'm going to get the worship team back up here, even though they just sat down. <laughs> and um, I, want, I want you guys to lead that last, that last song again. But before we sing that song, here's what I want you to do. Whatever you're carrying today, whatever you're carrying today, don't live in guilt or shame about it anymore. Release that to the Lord today. But also don't stay stuck. Don't stay stuck. He says, cast your cares on the Lord because the Lord cares for you. Jesus said, come to me if you're heavy. If you're carrying something you don't think you can carry anymore. Come to me, and I'll give you rest. And so here's what I want to do. We're not going to confess anything away about how we feel. We're not going to make a declaration. I think those things are good. But they got to be in the context of this is where I actually am, Lord. And instead of calling my girlfriend or Googling something, this morning I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you, Jesus. And so here's what I want us to do today. Maybe for the first time, 
in your life. I want you, when we sing this song, I want you to say with your mouth what's going on. It can be under your breath. But I want you to bring the pain and bring the hurt and bring the heaviness. And don't, just because you're at church, don't try to shove that down so you can deal with it later. Bring the hurt, bring the pain, bring the heaviness, the heavy burdens, and bring it to your tongue. And say, Lord, I am discouraged. Some of y'all, y'all, it's, you haven't done that in a really long time. What do I do about discouragement? What medicine is for depression? You know, like, I, it, it's like there's nothing wrong with Google searches and WebMD and all that. But, like, he said, come to me. Come to me. And my challenge is this. Just say to the Lord how you feel. He can handle it. He can handle it. Open your mouth and just admit, walk in humility, choose humility and just admit, Lord, I cannot do this by myself. I cannot do this by myself. I need you. Close your eyes. It's all of the room. Lord, I'm discouraged. Lord, I am depressed. Lord, I am disappointed. Lord, I am fearful about the future. Lord, I don't know what to do. I don't know what the next step is. but I trust you. Would you just declare that today?